Caiaphas, now having sat with his chief priests, they came up with a story. And they took Jesus down to Pilate the governor so that Jesus could be tried. The hope was that they would have had enough to have Jesus put to death. What was the story? They concocted, they concocted this story. They said to Pilate, Jesus was out among the people, telling and encouraging them to withhold their taxes. Don't pay tax. That was punishable by death. So they spent some time there at Pilate's place. And Pilate, having examined Jesus, didn't want to have anything to do with, with this, whole, this whole plan. Uh, and so uh, as, the, as the hearing proceeded, Pilate discovered that Jesus was a citizen of Galilee. And Pilate thought to himself, oh, there's this beautiful way of extricating myself from this. I am going to send him to the governor of Galilee, who by chance was in town because it was the time of the Passover. And everyone came into Jerusalem for the Passover. So Pilate then sends Jesus over to Herod. Herod spends a little time looking at the, at the case. He did not want it to have anything to do with it either. So he sends Jesus back to Pilate. Goes back to Pilate. Pilate now has to come up with some other reason why he should put Jesus to death. Story says that Pilate turns to the people. You know, many Bible commentators believe that Pilate thought. He didn't think that the people would want to crucify Jesus and have Barabbas released in his stead. He thought that the people would say, oh, give us Jesus, <laughs> because Barabbas was a criminal, a notorious criminal. There's no way that the people would say Barabbas, but they did. Pilate gave them the option. Who do you want me to release today? You know, I have the opportunity of releasing somebody today. Who do you think I should release? The people shouted, Give us Barabbas. Give us Barabbas. Pilate Therefore, having admitted that he had found no fault in Jesus, based on the insistence of the crowd, Barabbas was released, and Jesus was sentenced to be crucified. Oh, they mocked him that day. They put a crown of thorns on his head. They stuck a spear into his side. They forced him to carry his own cross. That's like asking you to dig your own grave. And then they nailed him to that cross where he died that memorable Friday afternoon. Then he was 
laid to rest in a borrowed tomb. It was Friday. And the church members were good Sabbath keepers. They rested that Sabbath. And then that early Sunday morning, the family came back to the tomb with the spices that they were going to use to embalm the body of Jesus. When they got there, they were astonished and amazed. The body was not there. Jesus was gone. And then they were greeted by heavenly messengers. They got these beautiful words. He is not here. He is risen. Jesus got a, an email from heaven that morning saying, Jesus, your father calls you. And Ellen White says that Jesus got up inside of that tomb and no one had to wake him up because he is God. With the life that was within him, he woke himself up. He got up and he walked out. And as we read the rest of the story, we learn that he hung around for 40 days. Met with the disciples off and on and they continue, he continued to prepare them for his departure. My friends, this morning, it is comforting to know that we serve not a dead God, but we serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he's alive. Jesus is alive. So Jesus is on this mountain. Again. Again. Oh, Peter, James, and John are right there. They are right there. This the Mount of Olives. And they were having a conversation there on the mountain. The Bible says as they spoke to each other, Jesus began to leave them. He began to just leave. Like magic, Jesus just began going up. Going up. He was just lifted up from the earth. He, he, he just started floating away. <laughs> oh, I remember one dream I had. Thank God it was only a dream. But I dreamt that it was resurrection morning. I was up and awake in my dream, and as I, I looked around, I saw, I saw people just floating away. They were just going up and going up and floating away, and they were happy, and they were joyful, and they were looking really good in my dream, but, but somehow I was not floating. And in my dream, I began to, to try to get started by jumping off the ground. But I was not moving. I was just looking at the others go. And when I discovered that I was not going anywhere, I woke up. I thank God that it was only a dream. But as they stood there, Jesus began to just float away. The disciples stood in wonder. And as they stood there looking, could you imagine with me? Eyes wide open. 
mouth wide open, looking. The book says two heavenly messengers came by, brought them the beautiful message. Men of Galilee, why are you standing here staring into heaven? Jesus has been taken from you into heaven. But someday he will return from heaven in the same way you saw him go. I want to remind you this morning, church. You see, that's the reason we all are here. I hope so. That's the reason we, we do church. I hope so. That's the reason you say that you have accepted Jesus. I hope so. That's the reason that, I, that you, you say that you are a Christian. I hope so. We are, we are looking, we are waiting with great anticipation for the return of Jesus. Many people are walking around today going about their business as though it is not going to happen. I want to let you know this morning, church, Jesus must come. He, he's coming. He's coming. And when he comes, the book says it's going to be a literal and personal coming. It's going to be a visible coming. It's going to be an audible coming. It's going to be a glorious return. It's going to be a sudden one. It's going to be an unexpected one. But it's going to be a catastrophic event. For Acts chapter 1 and verse 11 tells us, as they stood there gazing up into heaven, the heavenly messengers said, Why stand ye gazing this same Jesus. Not, not another one, not, not anybody else, not a phony, not a replacement. This same Jesus, the same one who walked with these disciples, the same one they slept with, the same one they looked at as he performed all of these miracles. This same Jesus will come someday. He will return from heaven in the same way you saw him go. So it's going to be a personal, it's going to be a literal return. My friends, we are going to one day just discover that it is the day. People are going to be about their own business. The Bible has been very clear on the matter. The word has encouraged us that in the same way that it occurred at the time of Noah, it's going to occur again. That people are going to just be going about their business when one day suddenly it's going to happen. Ellen White writing on the subject says that one day there's going to appear out in the east. A cloud about the size of a man's hand. You know the quote? And then she says, as that cloud moves closer to earth, people are going to discover that it's not a rain cloud. It's not a storm cloud. No, no, no. It's not a tornado. No. Music is going to be coming out of those clouds because the Bible says he will descend with the angelic host. They will descend with the trump of God. So they're going to be making music. It's going to be a literal and a personal return. Of course, you know, it's going to be a visible return because Revelation chapter 1 and verse 7 tells us that every eye, every eye shall see him. At the same time, every eye shall see him, even those who pierced him that day, all kingdoms of the earth.